and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome to the Cram Cannon Categories video tutorial thing. Or rather, the second take of it, because I tried recording this before, and I sounded like I was half dead, and the other half of me was really tired, so it didn't do so well. But here we are, we're back with bigger guns, a more awake person talking, and we're going to talk about the main four main categories of cram cannons because someone some time ago asked me to do a video like this sorry I can't remember the name of your name off the top of my head but here we are similar to how I did an advanced cannon categories video and disclaimer before anything else I do not claim to be an expert on crams even though I played with them pretty much more than any other weapon type in this game but here are the four main categories of cram as I know them, and as I tend to think of them. Usual thing applies in From the Depths is that there are no rules, there are only general guidelines. You can make almost anything work if you're good enough. So, crams have tend to come in four main flavors in From the Depths, and it depends mostly on two things. It depends on what kind of explosive, well, not explosive, just what kind of pellets you're using, what kind of color you're into, and it also depends on what kind of fuses you're planning to stick in your shells. It also partially depends on the size of the gun, but we'll get to that later. So, the first fuse we're going to show you is the most basic one, and it involves just high explosive pellets. This is, I think, the most general purpose kind of pellet you can get. In fact, pretty much I think really just like every single kind of cram gun needs to have these to be really effective because, well, there's a reason it's like more than twice as expensive as every other kind of pellet. It's because it's the most effective. It's the most bang for buck. High explosive is overall just the best general purpose damage dealing thing in From the Depths. Just for most situations and crams are really no different. The only exception is missiles because, like, they got nerfed really hard years ago. Rest in peace, missiles. We hardly knew ye. But any case, so the most basic form of cram is high explosive pellets. And if we go in here, the kind of fuse you want is where's it? Where's the fusing box? Ah, right in front of me. Inertial. So these are pretty much compulsory on any kind of cram gun. Like, almost compulsory. It's pretty much simply because they it's just against both armor and shields you need your shells to explode. Because armor and shields crop up a lot in this game, who would have thought? It's a game about like sci-fi armored warships for the most part. So, inertial fuses are pretty much compulsory. I can't think offhand of why you wouldn't want one unless you're really trying to save space in your shell because fuses do take up space. But, uh... So, I guess more with the demo on... Oh my god, I forgot to do this. I cannot believe it. I hate myself so much. Uh, what the... No, 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 false alarm. It is because I'm not sitting on the... Listening. Ah! So, we're just gonna clear the barrel. I should mention that uh, these guns are off uh, my main and favorite battleship. The Naga. Well, battle cruiser, I guess, and this is not the best cram Tetris in the world. You can certainly do better than this. This is mainly just for display purposes. And our target is none other than the King's Dead, which is a really good uh, target to use just when testing out not just crams but many things because it tends to have many layers of armor, especially below the waterline, and it doesn't have shields and it doesn't have pretty much any active defenses at all, so it's just good for seeing how weapon systems actually deal with just solid structure. And uh, so, HE crams, pretty general purpose because, well, they vaporize blocks like that. Did that actually take out the AI? That would be amazing if it did. It did not, but uh, it came very close. Who did it? Nope, it's still in there. So. HE, pretty standard. And uh, if you pack enough high explosive into a cram shell, it, uh, yeah, that's, uh, the thing's down 1% health already. That's just the one turret firing. And, uh, whatever it hasn't destroyed, it has, uh, certainly scratched the paint quite a bit. 
So, okay, we're gonna turn you off now, because that's enough. So generally, high explosive crams work at most gauges. Pretty much any kind of cram is best served big, so it's like a lot of things in front of the desk, but especially this, it's go big or go home, and these guns are decently big. They are almost full size, actually. In fact, they're very big. They're 1929 millimeters, and so high explosive tends to work across the board. That being said, crams under 1000 millimeter tend not to be very good anyway, so about 1000 to 2000 these things tend to do the job. It's usually a bit of a waste to just have HE in a big cram though, which brings me to the next category. And the next category is very sim similar to the first one, gun number two still has a lot of high explosive in it, and that's generally how I roll with crams, it's just high explosive is good. Also has frag. Now, the reason it has frag is in such certain frag as a whole in cram cannons is not as useful as high explosive. It doesn't do enough as much damage. It doesn't like wrap and warp around blocks as well. It's not actually as good against armor because the frags just bounce off, but it is very good for one thing, and that is timed fuses. Because crams have a very irritating habit, especially at lower gauges and especially at lower accuracies of missing targets by inches, and that is tremendously irritating. And so what you want to do instead is stick time fuses on them, so that even if they miss by just a meter or so, they still explode near the target, clip blocks off, and frags are really good for that, because they can reach a bit further than regular high explosions, because regular explosions are capped at about 11 meters, and frags are not. They can go, I don't know how far they can go before they despawn, but it's pretty far. As you'll see, they also up the damage a little bit, because see this little block right here? That's one frag that hit that, and frags in cram cannons scale up very, very quickly. They don't do well on their own, but mixed with high explosive, they can, each fragment can do a lot of damage at high cram at like high levels of being crammed, so you can see it is really scratching the paint quite a bit. One more shot just for good luck. And if it hits a turret, that'll be really good. I should mention how I've got uh, these set up as well. So these two on the left here are set to target random blocks with their AIs, which are over here. These two are set to go for are set with regular aim point selection to go for ammo barrels and whatnot. And what am I missing? I have crib notes. Why won't I look at them? Yeah. So time fuses are just really good at basically turning what would have been a missed shot into something that still deals damage, which improves efficiency. And efficiency is very good. We like efficiency because it means that we can do more with less. And then when we do more, we can do even more because we do more. I'm not sure where that sentence was going, but in any case. So, the next category, category number three, and those of you who know cram pellets well will already see where this is going, is the high explosive penetrator, or just the penetrator, the armor buster. Because it uses hardening pellets, and it uses... Let me get to the fuse box. Penetration depth. Or, failing that, time from first impact, which works in a very similar way. Penetration depth just means that it goes through this many layers of material before it explodes. Time for first impact just means it like explodes that many seconds after it hits something. That includes the water, I should mention. So, pen depth, I believe, I might be wrong about this, is generally a little bit better. Especially when you combine it with a timed fuse. Because it won't get fooled by things below the waterline, whereas time from first impact will. Time from first impact, on the other hand, is better at not over penetrating. Because pen depth, say, if it punch in this particular case, it's set to four meters, which I don't think this gun can actually do. I don't think it can punch through four meters of metal. Because if nothing else, because the kinetic damage isn't high enough in the shell, it needs a certain amount to do that. But if it, say, punches to, say, superstructure or a mast or just the very edge of a ship, which is just one or two layers of metal, it'll 
punch through that, and sail past, and the shell will do very little. Which is incidentally kind of how real Pendep shells worked in real life. Like, if you've got a shell designed to punch through an armored battleship, if you shoot it at, say, a light cruiser, the shell will punch straight through, without almost without slowing down, and just whistle mostly harmlessly through it. That's kind of how this works, which is also why the inertial fuse is a good idea, because I mean, this might be a little bit too strict, actually, because it means it explodes too soon, but it also means that uh, when you run into shields and, like, really heavy armor, this is still kind of helpful. So, the pen depth is uh, really quite useful against uh, things like this, actually. Anything that is well armored tends to be a bit of a pain for just regular HG grams, and I'm just going to heal this up quickly before uh, that gun fires, so we can actually see it do proper damage. And see, right there. I have great timing. So, you see here that uh, this shell is punched straight through this here hole, which means it's probably going to take out these uh, fuel deposits right now. Or not. Well, it did, actually. But uh, that's how many layers that is. I would say it looked like it went through about... Hard to tell. At least two layers of metal. Which isn't bad, because that's pretty tough, but... Uh, even against something you can't penetrate through, it still does better because that the uh, extra kinetic damage and armor piercing means that it can essentially destroy them better. Let's see if the mic timing is good again. You can see that explosion is actually inside the hull, and the explosion is actually inside here, which means it's blown a nice hole through here. And that is, again, a fair amount of metal, 2 millimeters, and block confetti. Very nice. So these AP, these AP crams tend to be quite, well, common. You see it in faction ships quite a bit. You also see it in tournament ships quite a bit, because ultimately it's one of the more effective and efficient ways to deal damage with crams. Because it basically means that entire explosion radius can do its work inside a ship. I think you can see just there the thing punched through and I think actually hit over here, which means it's getting very, very deep inside this craft. Like, a Kingstead is mostly empty space, but against a smaller craft, that would be very, very lethal. And see, there's one of the problems with uh, just using... Well, just using that. They worked because uh, it clipped off a piece of metal, sailed past, and then did nothing. So combining that with a timed fuse to explode slightly after the target is actually a very good idea. Okay, Turning so turn off. Repair you again, because uh, you're not allowed to die yet. And then we get to the final category, which is one that I haven't messed around with an awful lot. I have messed around with it a little bit recently, just to test, and it's kind of hit or miss for me, I am told, and I am willing to believe that it can be very effective, and that is EMP crams. Now this is a little bit different, like, these three all over here still basically rely on high explosive pellets to a certain extent, like, you can't go wrong by just adding a bit of HE to your crap, like, it, there's no real harm in it except increasing cost, because this, this stuff is, well, by far the best pellet overall. But uh, EMP, you have to be a little bit careful because in my testing, and again, I have no idea if this is actually the case, if you overdo it with the raw damage, be it a high explosive frag or hardener pellets, you can destroy blocks before the EMP jolt can travel through it. It's either that or the visual effect of EMP isn't actually like showing where the EMP has reached. It might just be instantaneous. I'm not sure, but in the any case, to really get bam for your buck with EMP pellets, you need a lot of them. In fact, in here, you can see, there's a lot of EMP in this thing. But against certain, in certain situations, it is very lethal, and in fact, I'm going to destroy the Kingstead right now, and I'm going to demonstrate with a smaller ship. Where are you? I'm going to show you. 
with the Tiger Shark. Turning off. And the Tiger Shark is a good test dummy for this because it has, like, well, it's a small ship, so you can see the EMP, the EMP behave itself. And it also has heavy armor, which is very vulnerable to EMP. It's got it around its ammo barrels, it's got it around its AI. So, just gonna clear the barrels of this EMP gun. And EMP crams actually look quite pretty because they've got lovely blue traces. Also, if you're wondering about the decoration here, that's decoration. I was bored at one point. And so, time fuses, I should mention, don't aren't particularly worth it with EMP because EMP needs to touch the target. It needs to touch either alloy or metal or heavy armor in order to have an effect. And I think only one of these shells is going to hit, and that's really irritating. However, so E a little bit of HE damage, and if I'm not mistaken, there. This, that EMP jolt was enough to travel right through the hull and knock off blocks of heavy armor or seriously damage them without even fully getting through the ship yet. So that's where EMP crams are very, very powerful because they deliver one hell of an EMP jolt. Like, I think only particle cannons are on the same, on the kind of same level of just the sheer high numbers of EMP damage. So if it fires again sometime this year, please, and, uh, might even AI dead this. Or can miss entire. I really cannot stand. I've moaned about this at length before, but I really cannot stand how poorly the AI aims at this game. It is. Like. I don't know. It is just real headache. But. So. Where did that go? Yep. So you can see right here. It's, like, tearing through heavy armor, absolutely no problem. And I believe it also knocked off uh, an AI component or three. Yep, there's heavy armor block, just got taken down. In fact, it's taken out... It's starting to take it out through the bottom now. Which means that AI is at risk, so... EMP as per usual, really against against small... Heavy metal targets. Heavy metal, <laughs> Someone break out the guitar. And so, I wouldn't describe EMP as a good main weapon, but it's a really good secondary, and just putting a smidge into a big cram cannon can just... It can mean the difference between taking all day to eliminate heavy armor and, like, well, doing that to it. Like, the hull isn't even breached yet, and so, arguably, having a big EMP cram like this could actually be a really good combination with... Heat or Hesh advanced cannons, because as you can see here, ordinarily a heat shell or a Hesh shell would cause spalling or fragmentation inside, and those fragments would kind of just bounce off the heavy armor here, and the well, the ammo would be safe. If you throw an EMP cram on him as well, well, in this particular case, certainly it's just stripping that heavy armor away. Which means that when that heat or hair shell pops to three, it is just going to trigger all this and you will just blow up vital parts of the ship much more quickly. And just having a little bit of high explosive on the outside just is a little bit of extra damage. So, that is basically all of the, well, four basic cram categories. I say again, this is not a hard and fast rule. You can mix pretty much all the pellet types to get uh, what kind of cram cannon you want. It's just that these, if you keep these four categories in mind, it'll probably work a little bit better. And as per usual, just there's other things as well. There's, t there's the tetrising of the pellets and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, look on the edge here. This is rubbish tetrising. It's like, it's a two-way connection over here. This is very stupid. Never do this. This was just for testing purposes. And one final thing, I should mention that with uh, penetration depth, I have been told also reliably that it doesn't have to be high explosive in here. Uh, pen depth frag can work as well. I was in fact just testing it just now, and uh, it can work. It can be kind of good. I wouldn't recommend just doing it on its own with just uh, hardener pellets and 
What's it? Just Hardener and Frag. I would still put some high explosive in there simply just to make it a little bit more reliable. Frags have a habit of bouncing all over the place. So, to demonstrate how sexy these new guns are, I will demonstrate with the skill up. And those of you watching my campaign episodes uh, probably know the skill up quite well. And if we're gonna throw it against uh, the Norge. Norge? Which way are you pointing? Perfect. Right over here we will throw you. And the reason I'm using the skeleton is because simply because it's got three out of the four categories of crams that I just showed off. It's got regular high explosive, it has HE frag timed fuse. Incidentally, you don't need frag for time fuse, it's like, it's just frag works really well with it. And it also has penetration depth. Which aren't super powerful because these guns are tiny, but it just does make the difference when the explosion happens just one meter closer to the center of a ship. It just, it can make a big difference, especially when popping turrets. And you can also see, it also makes very pretty colors. You see the deep red, you see the slightly lighter red with the frag, and you see the lovely green of the kinetic shells, and it's just, it's really pretty, and what it does to things is also really pretty. Assuming it hits. I hate detection systems. I think that was a pen depth that just took out that. Ignore the torpedoes, they are irrelevant. Yep, so Pendep is really good at popping turrets, I should mention. I should also mention that f those frags are really good for shearing off gun barrels. You see, that turret it just got annihilated by that. That's Pendep for you. It would have taken regular high explosive shells probably several goes to do that, simply because they had to get through the armor. And the Norge is actually pretty decently armored. It's got lots of layers of metal. And Pendepth just does not care about that. If you really want to defend against Pendepth crams, well, you need you really need lambs or like a really heavy armor. You can see that it's just reaching so deep inside. It's like all this is just blown apart. It's like right in the middle here. I actually think, yeah. I think one of the Pendepth shells actually sneaked in here and took out this gun on the other side of the ship which is really really awesome please don't miss there's another turret biting the dust i i remember testing the old versions of the skiller against the norge before and really it does so much better now that pen depth and well timed frag is in there because yeah i feel kind of stupid for not uh, using pen depth more because it's just when you get the ingredients in the gun right it's just so beautiful we yep that's another gun and i think there was also ammo that went up there and as for uh, if you want to deal with shields just well disruptor aps i guess I'd actually stick it be on the skiller, why not? Look at that. There's no block confetti because the blocks are vaporized. Yep, engines are down. Please ignore the horrible accuracy. We Beautiful girl. See in there, just reaches in. Particularly when all these shell, these uh, cram categories are combined. It just, it, it makes it way more effective than it otherwise would be. And she's despawning. Let's go hop on the skull. Let's say hi. Millions of guns, oi. Millions of guns. So, I hope this video was helpful, I hope it was uh, educational, I hope it was fun. 
And uh, I am... Yeah, crams. Like, varieties of crams. There's not just one cram. There are many crams. Embrace all the crams. They're good. Uh, and I'm also talking to you uh, from the Depths Developers. They need a buff. Sorry, I just had to sneak that in. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. And uh, thank you all again for helping me reach, uh, actually, quite a bit beyond now, 500 subscribers. That is an awesome thing to, well, have happen. And uh, all of you are awesome for helping me get this far. So, farewell.